Hey there everyone, my name is Kiku and welcome to a tutorial about heads. This is the second part, if you haven't watched the other one I will leave a link in the description, but uh, this time, since I have covered the basics somewhat, I'll be focusing on the angles of the head, so not necessarily just uh, what, can, what are the parts, what are the forms we will be using, and what are the general ones, you can actually add more on top of them. I actually recommend that for each character you don't use the same forms because that ends up getting you into the, as some people call it, the Barbie doll syndrome, which is you have one archetype, you have one perfect character you always draw, and then you just change the hair and make it someone else. It's no cool. Um, so here I will be... Well, let's first start with some, let's just look back at what we learned and what are these forms and really these here I'm drawing right now are positional spheres. These are not actually anything in the character, these are just a tool to help you see what I mean really. So here right now I'm gonna do, uh, let's do the three basic angles. By the way, this is a really bad thing to, to get into say hey I want to draw this character okay I'm gonna do it from the side I'm gonna do it from three quarters or I'm going to I'm gonna do it from the front and there is no other option and I think that just kind of really pigeonholes you <laughs> into this kind of hey I know how this looks from this exact angle but if I tilt it downwards suddenly I don't know anymore and I think that's really harmful as an artist because you want to have as many options as you can so if your character looking down is a better way to teach the story you were trying to tell then by all means have it look downwards and and, and so uh, I'll just place down all the things we'll, we will be using in these three little circles over here and then we, we're gonna jump into some more crazy angles so first of all I'd like to start with the so I cut this little ball in two, so there is a vertical line and a horizontal line. This just helped me place my features, so if I were to draw this head big, I would draw the, sa the same features on the same scale in relation to this ball instead of uh, just how I think it should be. And that really helps me to scale things properly. So uh, the proportions I look for are actually based on this sphere right here. So this is actually a really important step for me. And you can use a square or a cube. Some, some people use a cube, for instance, here. Instead of having a, a circle, you would have like this cube shape. And that's fine, that's a more technical approach to it. I just like circles because they remind me of heads. That's that's all there is to it. But also, it's easier to see the angles. And the face actually has this little curve. And when you think of a circle, it's easier for you to remember. So I use circles, you can use squares or whatever. On some characters, I will use a square because that's more characteristic to them. And, well, that's fine. So. Um, the first thing we looked into was the eye sockets, and the eye sockets, they go inwards. So this is as if you are cutting a hole into the into this sphere. So this actually pushes inwards and creates this depth here. I'm gonna demark like this, but you should never draw this line. That, that just makes it look really mechanical, if you will. Um, but this helps you understand what's going on. So this is actually kind of like a window into the character. Uh, and then here, so here's three quarters view. And so I will be taking this here. So think of this like this is the front and this is the side. So uh, the proportions I use here are gonna be applied here just in angle. So if you can think of this as like you grab this thing and then you just kind of twist it to the side, make it kind of go a little in perspective, you get the same idea. So you will not draw the same things, but so long as you understand that this is what you're actually drawing, then that's fine. You don't, you, you have no problems with it. So here you can see I changed the shape a little bit, but roughly the distance stays the same on all three. And uh, so let's see, yep. So this is the first feature, the second one would be the muzzle. I like to just start, so let's go for this one, this one is easier to explain. So the muzzle has really 
the height of the eyes here and then you just slope it downwards to the to the actual muzzle and this can be longer this can be shorter this distance here also changes a lot depending on the character if you make it too tall it's more masculine if you make it too wide it's also too masculine so you should keep that in mind when you're designing your characters but right now there's not much of an issue we're just adding a big basic box shape i will not go into much details but one thing you should know is that this thing is more uh this here, vision here is going to show you better I like to instead of start from right the middle, I like to start from this line because this is where usually your vision cuts because the muzzle is going to extend from this little middle area, um, the, the brow ridge I guess, uh, and it's going to extend from this and then slope downwards to the both, both of the sides and make the muzzle shape. So usually this is where it cuts uh, your vision so you can see what's in here and that's that makes the contour it's just an easy way for me to remember let's try uh, I think this is around the same length and so here I will actually draw this since we are seeing this from the front so actually now there is a bit of uh, you actually see some of the shape from both sides so I'm gonna just draw this really weird uh, square it's like a square but it has a little uh, little hat if you will it's just uh, this part over here is rounded because it, it connects to this and then slopes down to this kind of boxy it, it actually is wider here but you don't have to draw this on your position it just makes it easier uh, let me take a look at from the other side yeah I did this wrong a little let's just fix this real quick so this line here should be aligned with this line so it should be more like this yeah See, that looks better. Mm -hmm. uh, always flip your canvas when you're unsure of something that really helps you to see things in a better way. So this looks ugly as hell right now and that's fine because we are just creating some shapes right now. This is not meant to be a character or anything. It's just a, kind of an easy way for you to learn. So you can add a middle line here and this kind of thing goes forwards as well. There are a lot of things you can do. You can make this shape more complex or more simple depending on what you want to do with it. But really, it's just a matter of preference. You are drawing these shapes for yourself because this is what you were doing to make your job, your own job easier. So if you go too fancy with it, as <laughs> it's just gonna end up boggling you down. And these are just the primary forms. We have the secondary forms we will be putting on top of these and that will really uh, help you define the shape so if you notice here this is not uh, exact let's say that on it's more like angled downwards I think this gives it a way more natural curve because uh, muzzles tend to do that so they don't come straight off here and go down that looks kind of weird and so here we actually see as if it was angled a little downwards I'm gonna just give it this indication here from the front it's a bit hard to see the muzzle but you get the hang of it especially if you take this roof so you actually have some of the top plane some of the bottom the front plane and, so, and none of this this one doesn't appear and this helps you understand a little so here it spreads out and then we have the cheeks they for me they usually attach somewhere around the, the eye line that depends on the character but let's just make it a little bit above and have this triangular shape so from the front you don't see much but it's actually something like this uh, it's a little mm, it's it's a pyramid I guess so it comes from here then goes up to here and here is around the middle of the side view and an important thing to notice about the side view is that actually you are looking at a sphere so this has depth and being a sphere this area here is more far away from you than this one. So you can actually have some perspective here. You don't have to draw everything flat. Just a tip. Uh, I've seen some people just draw everything flat as if there was no change in planes at all. And that just makes your character look really, really mm, flat, I guess. It's like, yeah, uh, here, my character has, looks like this. And then his nose is like this. And then his nose is like this. Years go like this. 
and, and you just really don't give it any depth at all it's just I don't know it, it looks a little uncanny I guess so I think this should be a little more towards here so anyways this attaches here just a little bit above this circle line and this is where this guidelines really come handy it's just a way for you to measure and just reproduce the same things you, you've seen and this um, so here same thing and slopes backwards on the forehead goes around here for the head and I like to give this little kind of duty shape it's just um, because the head it has a higher point on the back than it has on the front and I like to emphasize that on furries I think this makes the neck touch a lot nicer to the head but that's really a personal thing for me you don't have to actually do it this should be more here so here it's like a triangle let's add this triangle here and this guy's muscle is actually a bit too long here on the front let's let's fix this thing doesn't look right should be fixed so mm -hmm. yeah one rule of thumb is really be happy with whatever you draw right now so if your sketch looks strange if your sketch looks off don't take it forwards don't say hey uh, I'll just fix this sometime later that's fine I'll continue with this right now and then I'll fix it some other time because uh, right now it's just a sketch I don't have to have it look nice actually you do <laughs> it really helps if you if your sketch looks nice because then you know everything is right so here you see this looks a lot better than last time and that's just uh, because I mirrored this this things here instead of just drawing on a weird square it's just that these forms are very um, how do I say it they're very organic and they don't have actual uh, edges you can use the edges to do some of these things but um, I like to keep it somewhat um, abstract if you will for this guidelines and this basic shapes I do instead of trying to make them into very specific geometric forms so anyways back to here we have the cheeks and then on the on the sides I usually start them around and a little bit above the cheeks and that depends a lot on the character and on the type of the ears but let's just give this guy a, this normal triangle shape ears kind of Mm, the ears have actually this little bump down here. I think this is where it, it just moves and stuff. Um, just Google anatomy and go for it. I won't get into ears right now, but I might do something more specific later. That depends. So, uh, ear here, ear here. Let's just make this one like this. So here on the side view, the ear goes back and then it angles forwards. This is an important thing to remember because otherwise you will be drawing some Doritos here and that's not gonna look fun uh, so it follows this headline so both sides they attach to this place and voila this is done all right so this is the head and now we can use the actually let, let me draw it from the back too that that might help you guys so let's go for the back view uh, let's make it a little bigger because the other ones are bigger increase brush size let's go okay so something like this so here the same thing but we will be drawing the back and from the back uh, the head I like to make it a little bit above this line Again, uh, this is, depends on, a lot on the character. The neck connects here and then actually angles towards instead of going down. And this is also true on humans, but to a lesser extent. I just like to emphasize this because, uh, say, this is the head. And from animals, it connects from the back and on humans from below. So, uh, this. I like to instead of it doesn't connect from exactly below it's more like um, just this and I like to make it like this for furries I think this looks great uh, so that's why I do it this way you're free to change it to your own or maybe just twist it to your own style I don't care just do whatever if it looks good then it's good um, so that goes here and then the head just kind of does this here we have the cheeks 
picture kind of like this. We are seeing the, the Star Wars from the cheeks here, something like this usually. Um, and then on the top of the head, the, the ears, they are kind of rounded on the back. This is something important. A lot of people don't really draw this part. And it's very rare for you to draw because usually they have hair and hair just conveniently covers all these parts you don't know how to draw. And that's really nice. But you shouldn't rely on those crutches. Someday you will have to draw something without hair and that's going to be a trouble. So practice. All right, so we have all this kind of views, but we will not be using this. I'm not gonna say, hey, uh, you should measure the distance between here and here so you can do this and that. I don't, I don't think that that's just really helpful. Uh, honestly, just try to think of how the character is in 3D instead of uh, trying to remember specific guidelines or proportions. These things come naturally to you and you can practice them if you really want to. Uh, in fact, it's useful to practice them, but only if you understand why you are practicing them. Otherwise, it's just like, yeah, uh, I'll try to remember all the specific things that I will, then I'll just forget. All right, let's add in the neck, I forgot. So the neck, as I said, I draw it like this. I think this makes gives it an interesting shape. Uh, for females, I usually do it like this. For males, I make it a little thicker. Sometimes I, I make this a little bit smaller on males. This depends a lot on the character as well. From the front, you you have something like this. I don't know. There's not much to say from the front view. Uh, so here are some some of those muscle thingies. Yeah, and from this you have something like this. All right. So um, now that we got that covered, there there is something we should mention, which is the What's it called again? Uh, well, there are the major forms, which are, are the ones we drew here. These are just like rough guidelines, if you will, to where each of these things go. And then you can add in more. Let's get this guy out here. You, should, you do not belong here. And then you have more specific things like the actual eye and the nose, and then uh, this bump here, and every. And like the strand that this is not exactly like this maybe it has like this sloping shape downwards here and everything these are all uh, secondary shapes because they do not impact the design as much say you can get this down on the page and you know where everything will be but if you draw in the eye it's not gonna help you see this better it's just gonna add in more detail so this eye is a secondary form to the eye socket because the eye socket uh, has the eye inside of it it's like you have this cylinder for the arm yeah, yeah cylinder and then you have this here for the bicep this here for the tricep and uh, so on and so forth and so and here maybe the shoulder yeah. so this treats muscles here not that, that they are not important, but they are secondary shapes because if you do not have the the main shape, which is the cylinder here, you draw them wrong. Say the cylinder is wrong. Let's just draw a wrong cylinder. Say it's more like this. And then you try to draw in the bicep and, that's, and then the other muscles. And it's just gonna look weird because uh, this shape is more important than the others. So this you attach to the first one. So get the first one right and then get, go to the details. So basically go from big to small. Same thing I'll repeat throughout these videos because this is really the foundation of drawing. If the big is wrong, the small is gonna be even more wrong. You can fix the big by using the small. That's not how it works. It's like your wall is you're you're building a house and the wall is all like all cracked and you just paint it on top of it because then it will look nice even though it's still broken. Not very useful. Um, so, anyways, big to small. Let's go. So, um, from these shapes, let me just lower the opacity on this layer. I have this behind. I think I mentioned it. Let's change this color to a more nice color. Um, and let's let's just add some details to these guys and let's make this into an actual character. So when you are zooming in and doing your details, make your brush smaller than the brush you did on the layer before. Because if you use the same size of brush, it's kind of like you're drawing the same thing. Let's 
make it look like she's like oh so kind of surprised so here we have this here we can add a bump to the eye socket we can actually follow this line through i think this looks nice on this kind of view here you can see a bit of the cheek this is also an important landmark here we're gonna draw in the eye and notice how the eye is not drawn on this line but rather this line the eye is inside the eye socket not just hovering in front of it this helps you see more properly I, I usually add an indication something like this so you can see it better and understand that this is under and here we can also shade this in a little just a little bit so here uh, we have this eye let's take a look yep that looks nice um, so the nose if you look if you follow this center line here from the circle it's not very visible right now but if you follow this and then you slope it over you get to the middle of the nose which is something like that here so you don't have to draw this line you just have to kind of follow it with your eyes and your nose is gonna be pointing towards where the muzzle is pointing it please don't draw your nose wrong so here is the tip of the nose here the nose is gonna do something like this Will. Uh, you can use a triangle say here is the primary shape and then here you can just break this shape down into other shapes more easily than if you were to draw them right away and again big to small this is very useful try that so let's flip looks right and now down here i like to add a little bit of the, the lips this i think makes help makes you look nicer so here we have the muzzle shape and if you notice this is not exactly uh, flat on so from here you're not gonna draw this that's not how it works again this is a minor form to this major form so you will wrap this around that form you can notice how immediately that looks way better you're just following this this through and there is no secret if you draw every shape right if you just uh, pay attention to where everything is on space your drawing is gonna turn out great <laughs> it's all there is to it so here we have a little bit of the chin I like to make the chin a little come a little forwards kind of have this shape and then down here uh, here I just fade out usually and then here we have the cheek and so let's just add some flip here Great. So here we can shade this down. I don't like to make a thick line here. I think this separates the forms too much. But I do add some shading down here just to help to notice that this area is going under and then to the neck. It's just a tiny detail. From this view, it doesn't really matter that much, but it's a nice thing to keep, to keep in mind. So here we have the neck. neck usually is like this. Um, yep. So let's just add in a little bit of hair here and whatnot. Lovely. Mm -hmm. So here's the ear. And you see, I'm just using everything I laid down on the previous step to draw this new step. So if whatever I drew on the other step was not right, how am I supposed to do this one? If, if your mistakes from the previous stage just carry over to this one, you're gonna make new mistakes because the forms you drew on top of the old, old form are also wrong because the old form is wrong and so now instead of having one mistake you have four and then if you break that down further suddenly you have 10 mistakes and 20 and then your character just loses form and it looks flat and then you're like oh, what why is my character wrong well probably because you didn't pay enough attention in the sketch so pay attention to this and this is really the concept of what we will be doing so you you position every form in space and then you just do your thing with them then from this point onwards if everything is right if you have all the positioning the positioning from for everything you need then it's just a matter of just drawing them actually committing to the details but if you have this thing wrong then everything that you draw underneath will be wrong as well so let's put this to practice um i'll hide these layers let's draw a few characters here um i'll start with my own character i really like Berlin's lynx girl so why not start with her so here i have 
a little ball so I can have the positioning and I will draw her facing downwards so instead of drawing a line here I will draw from the, the center usually following this through say I'm drawing this as if I am drawing over the entire shape instead of just drawing this side because then it looks kind of wrong usually you don't get the angle right but if you go through with your mouse or your stylus or your pencil or whatever you use to draw then it's gonna be a much more natural curve and then here uh, she's she's gonna be looking this way so here is the point where we have this kind of cross and so since we are looking from underneath you can notice her the top of her head would be right here and here a side view here is front here is top um, I use a circle because to me it feels more natural but if you're starting out and you want to use a square or maybe you just like a square more that's personal preference go ahead and so uh, I'll start this one with a square I think that that might actually be more be clearer so here uh, I have the eye sockets and and I'm drawing as if I am on the front view right now because I am just drawing on this side of the square and so this is the front and this also digs in does the same thing as it did on the other one but here the, the angle is gonna be much lower because uh, this angle is actually pointing downward so her muzzle is going to do something like this mm -hmm. So here we have the muscle. She has a pretty thick muscle, usually. Uh, maybe not so much. More like this. Yeah, that sounds about right. So I always try to get uh, your sketches to look characteristic to the character, uh, if that makes sense. So uh, you should do things generic enough so that they are easy to draw, but they should resemble what you are drawing. If they don't, then it's kind of useless. <laughs> So there is a fine line between uh, drawing too much and wasting a bunch of time and not drawing enough and the thing you drew not being useful at all. So here we have the muscle. I usually don't draw all these lines. For me it's just something I, I tend to, to just have in my head instead. So her muscle, I mean her cheeks do this kind of thing because she uh, but right now, since I'm just looking at the position in space, I'll do this. I think this is easier to remember, and I think this is, say, here's the middle, and this is just easier to position in space. So if you think about it like this, yeah, that's good enough. So voila, we have most of it done, and so from here, you can see we're crossing through with this line over the top line. And you can draw this if you think it makes it easier. I draw this line every time and I need to draw something on the top line and you can see why. This line starts on it, this line ends on it. This line starts on it, this line ends on it. The ears, the front of the ears usually align. You don't have one ear here and then the other here. This is not how it works. So if you draw one line over the form, you can easily align them. And then from here, I can just draw the back side of them. And this makes my job much easier. I don't have to think too much about this. And we are looking this from above. And so you can see that this is what we are looking at. Uh, this should actually be more forwards because we're looking from above. Same thing here. This ears seem to be kind of back. They should not be. Uh -huh. So. Um, this is really just eliminating a few of the big major problems your drawing can have so that then you can just focus on the minor problems and the things that take less to solve because if you mess up this part of the drawing then everything else you put after this part will also be wrong because this is the foundation if you will if this is the basic if you if you get the basics wrong then whatever else you put on top of those basics will also be wrong because it depends on them so here now um, let's make this blue and then let's just add in so now 
I'll draw more organic, less shape, more of the actual character. So here we have the fluff and the ears, and then here we have the other ear. Does this thing looks like this? Nice. Uh -huh. So here I'm drawing quick, so this may be slightly off, but as you can see, since I did all the basics, this can't be that wrong. Most of the time it's just gonna be slightly off. So here we have the cheek, and remember her cheek does that thing, so it should be way down. I think it, it actually shows here. So here again I'm gonna do this thing as well. Uh, let me just fix this real quick. Let's just do it like this. Uh -huh. And it connects up here. So. Uh -huh. The eye socket goes over this side, and here is the eye. So here's where she's looking at. And this eye is actually hidden behind this little, so you should take that in note. And when you're drawing things, remember we are seeing this from above, so this top lid is actually going to be more noticeable to us, and also this area here. And this is important if you want to keep things actually making sense in space. Make enough of these mistakes and your character will kind of fall apart on its own. Uh, but one or two is really, really fine, you can let them go, they don't really make that much of a difference. But if you get enough of them wrong or one really wrong, then it's gonna throw everything else off. So here is the nose and her mouth. Since uh, the mouse is usually has this shape and since we're looking from down it's gonna have this shape more like this so again we're following the, the path on the muzzle we're not just drawing a line we're, we're following this form and well if you follow the form you get the thing right so here has the muzzle I think this should be a little thicker actually mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she, uh, her muzzle should actually be a little shorter, but that's fine. Um, it does without looking. Uh -huh. So here, and so here we have a plane, which is the top plane, and then here we have this little thing down here. So uh, here we have a little bit of the back of the head. So yeah, this um, this is about it. This should be a little for more forwards. This is here. Then here we had some hair. Um, the hair also just wrapped around this forms. The hair does not phase through ears as much as you would like it to. But it usually covers the ears quite a bit. So I'm just adding a bunch of hair here, 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 adding some of these eyebrows. And yeah, that's the basic concept. Let's do a few more. Mm. So we have here, here. So now I'll be drawing more like I usually draw instead of this. Actually, too simple. Let's do a very extreme one. Almost there, but not quite. And let's just do this here. Um, this is gonna be different. So here, this eye socket actually opens up to the side and goes up here and here it just goes into then out in the cheeks the muzzle pushes outwards let's make this longer and kind of thin so it's more like this uh -huh. so this is the muzzle the cheeks gonna push way back and you can see this is not very drawn at all. This is just an underlying drawing. This is something I do below my drawings usually. I can usually add in all if I want for the eyes. I think this helps if you're having trouble positioning them. Then you can just keep going the, the lids top. Again, uh, while I did say the eyes are not uh, a major form, doesn't mean you shouldn't draw them in this stage. It's really up to you. Sometimes it helps to have them in so you can notice some problems same with the nose they are important shapes but they are not major shapes so they are drawn after you draw the shapes that 
are we done? So here I have this. Uh, let's make this guy face a little bit. Uh, let's give him less head. Uh, go more like this. Mm, more like this, I think. Should be better. And then we have the ear on top here. Have the other ear on this side. So here we have this kind of shape. Well, actually, let's do the ears back. So because we haven't seen that yet, so the ear just moves backward. It's just like. So here the eye sockets here, but the brow line is gonna be more like this. So this pushes the eyes down. So now he's he has wide eyes and he has furrowed eyebrows. This makes him angry. You can notice the immediate effect that does. So here we add a little ring, a few wrinkles. Let's cut his mouth downwards. This and and now we have a better expression for this guy. Then like. The mouth is really so. The mouth, uh, this is um, something a little out of the topic, but if you do the corners down, it looks kind of angry. If you do the corners up, it looks happy. We understand this from very basic things usually do, but uh, the corners really say a lot about the mouth, but it also should follow the angle, so this is even higher. If you don't follow the angle and you just draw this, this is no longer a smile if your character's angle is like this. This is just normal. And so that's just a, a thing to keep in mind. Let's just make them like this. He, he's like really ticked off. So his neck. Uh, this guy, this is a fox, so let's give him a very thick neck. Because lots of poof and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Okay, next, um, let's draw and let's see, let's draw in a more a different character. Let's do one looking up. So, uh, an interesting thing for you to internalize this concept is really to do up and down. These angles really push what you should know because, like here, this muzzle is gonna overlap with the with what you have for the eyes. This is a really big muzzle, and this is a very extreme angle. So here we have the bottom plane of the muzzle. This is something you should note. Uh, here the nose is pushing off. You see a, a lot of the bottom plane of the nose. Uh, here the eyes. You're going to see the eye more like this. And then here. OK. Uh, you're gonna see also the the bottom side of the cheeks. Should do them like this. Then yes, you see the bottom side of them. The ears are actually moving away from you, so you see less of them because the forehead gets in the way. Mm -hmm. The mouth, like I said, just follows this line. So he's actually happy, even though his mouth is curling downwards because the corner is pointing up. The corner is important. So here we have something like this, and then the other ear goes on this side. Let's just not draw this in too much. Wanna... So the neck it just connects here, and this is the bottom plane of the head. Let's just draw in the other cheek. Should should be somewhere around here if the other one is there. Okay, so we have everything here. This is actually looks a little off. Again, always try to make things look right. So we have all the details now. And so the neck comes in here, attaches under the muzzle, goes back, falls with this kind of shape. So if we were to, let's take this off, face it, make it a new layer. Mm -hmm. Now draw on top this guy. We can now easily get these details in. And this now looks nice. Even though we did a bunch of weird lines on top of it, we can easily take them out. So if you're doing this on traditional, you should probably use uh, one of those color arrays pencils. You can get them on Amazon. 
um, prisma color or whatever other you want just look up like call erase it's a kind of pencil it's a, it's a colorish pencil you can erase use use a blue one or a red one whichever whichever you like the most and that's gonna help you do the sketches and then draw on top of them uh, I did this a lot before I got into digital and so that's a good tip I can give you so here's this guy here we have this his muzzle his cheek actually moves up bumps here as well uh, here we can do some tone I don't recommend you to actually draw in this line it's more uh, because this makes it really not strange but more like uh, it gives it a, a, a really mm, mechanical curve and this is more organic this is not a sharp curve at all so this looks better if you don't give it uh, the a sharp corner there so here we can add in a little bit of this side so here we have the head the head just goes back in space we're not going to see that much the ears are here on top and so you see i messed up the ears there but that was a minor one and i can easily draw it in even following the, the one i did back there even though it's in the wrong position um, but if it's really wrong you might just want to stop and go back to that layer and fix it before continuing on this one or you may risk just throwing off your drawing and you don't want to do that okay so this guy is here now let's make a new one um, i don't know let's make a good one so let's do um let's make a like this and then way down this. so let's give this one really big eyes Let's just play around with the proportions a little. So this uh, small muzzle. So let's make this a really cute kind of style. And again, uh, if you have the proportions you want right, this can really fit any style you want. Just because um, the same rules apply for, for everything. Even uh, if your character is really cartoony, it still exists in a 3D space. So if you portray it in a 3D space, it's gonna look better. So here we have, uh, this nose should actually be a little bit smaller if I want to do this cute, um, more like that, the eyes are going to be massive, just tuck it in here, so let's make this eyes kind of angled upwards, I don't know, I kind of like this kind of angle, uh, again you don't have to follow exact the lines you place down but they should guide you on what you are doing. So let's just give her this big old eyes. Um, so she's like, oh! <laughs> mm -hmm. So looking down, the nose should actually be more towards here, and the mouth should pop a little bit more. So let's just give this. Those big old round ears. Okay, and that's that. Let's join the neck here. And you see, this is really just rough guidelines. There's nothing you should uh, avoid because, hey, guidelines suck. I, I am a good artist, I don't need guidelines. And that's not the argument some people make, but that's the argument some people think. They hate guidelines because guidelines are like uh, this set on stone thing you should do for every dime, and that's really not what they should do or be, but that's what a lot of people make them to be. And so guidelines really are just things you place down so you know what you're doing. <laughs> if they help you, then you place them down. If they don't help you, you hide them. For instance, here I didn't draw the the top of the head or anything like that because those are not useful for me right now I don't need to draw every guideline I just draw the ones I want and the ones I need so um, on that topic let's think about it a little uh, this has been going on for a while so I think I should wrap this up and how about we do an assignment yay okay so assignment for this is gonna be pretty simple but also kind of hard. I can draw a straight line. Let's go. Uh, your assign assignment for this sign. 
is going to be pretty simple 50 heads do them in different angles try to avoid the flat on angle try to avoid the flat uh, perspective angle but do it once or twice that's fine uh, but not only that that's gonna be five characters so you're gonna do 10 for each and I'm asking you to do that not just because I'm evil and all I may also be evil and all but the real reason for you to do five characters instead of just a bunch of random characters like I did up here is because then you have to have them consistent from one place to another so you have to understand the difference the distance here the distance here the distance here and translate this to different poses this may sound hard and that's because it is but if you do make this assignment and great you probably improved a bunch while doing it and why don't you show me throw it on discord i have i made a relatively new discord it's kind of empty i have a lot of people right now so join up pm me or something and there is a channel there for assignments where you can post them and i will reveal them for you and help you out on what you did wrong so i think that's a nice thing to do and so if you like that idea join my discord channel and stuff and if you want to see more videos just go and hit the subscribe button and hit like if you like it if you do not like it just tell me why and press the other button and anyways that's gonna be it for today thank you so much and goodbye